Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris with Kristen's Crafts and today I am going to be bringing you a process video for the Baby's Got Scrap series that we have going on this month in January. So for this process video, I am going to be making pictures of my um, my oldest grandson, Dylan. He was decorating his gingerbread house. Now I have trimmed these down to uh, five and a quarter inches high by four wide, just so that I would be able to use the six by six paper pads for uh, matting. Now this piece of paper here is from Cartabella from the Christmas Cheer Collection. And this paper pad is also from that same collection. So I was thinking I could go ahead first of all and start matting the photos. And then I thought maybe I could do like a um, like um, either two by two or three by three squares going down the side um, and decorating with that. So let's just kind of go through. I know I'd want papers that will like stand out like the green plaid because um, I want it to stand up against that um, red background. So let's see if we have another sheet of this. This is their um, mega pad. So um, a lot of cute designs in here. And I've, I've got this in probably one of their warehouse boxes. So it's time to get it used up. And let me see if I can find, I have a green and a brown. I'm just looking to see if I have another one of these green. I want to say these mega pads have three of each design. So to use two of them as matting is fine. All right. Let's go ahead and start with that first. And we'll just give it a, um, enough of a border that, um, like about an eighth of an inch of a border, that allows it to stand up against that um, paper and allows the pictures to um, um, pop out versus if you had um, put it on another they would blend in if you did like red on red so you want to try and pick a contrasting color and let's see let's get this one on and we'll do the same thing Now this is a tradition that we do every year. Um, we actually decorate Christmas cookies and gingerbread houses. And normally we do it like a few days before Christmas, but this year the way that Christmas Eve fell, um, we ended up doing it on Christmas Eve. And so we never got to decorating the actual Christmas cookies themselves. Um, I think the kids are now getting to the age where they have more fun with the gingerbread houses and by the time they do that, you know, after a little while, their attention span um, kind of dwindles. All right, so what I think I want to do is I'm looking for a pattern because I'm thinking I'm going to decorate on top of them. So I'm thinking I want to do like squares, like uh, maybe two by two or three by three and have them going down and then mix them in. Now this would be three by three, and maybe I could cut like one of these and use one of them as one of the squares going down the side. So I, again, want to pick colors that are going to um, be more tone on tone, um, but also allow me to put decorations on top of it. So like this green plaid would be one. Um, here's another one with the four by four. All right, let's try and see what we can start with, first of all. And I'll just go ahead and cut these squares. And I'm gonna start with a three by three and see how they go. And if it looks like um, it's um, not gonna work or they're too big, I can always cut them down to a two by two 
and we can revisit our idea. I don't think I'm gonna make the homemade with love or the have a Merry Christmas with the cookies because we didn't do the cookies, but I'm okay with the gingerbread family because and family tradition because it was gingerbread houses. So we can use that one. That's my logic. Uh, may your Christmas sparkle with love, laughter, and goodwill. And Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And Santa Claus is coming to town. I like the cookies for Santa, but again, we didn't do the cookies. So I'm thinking maybe the Merry Christmas one. But I think what I'm going to do on this one, instead of going... No, I'll do it. Actually, let's do the Santa Claus is coming to town. Because it was Christmas Eve and they were all excited and getting ready for the visit from Santa. So, um, and I did send them home with a plate of cookies. They just weren't decorated because, again, we didn't get to that part of it. All right, so we have those. So we can always revisit and grab a couple more. And then this has the cookie decorating and also the plaid. So I'm gonna try and get a couple of these. So again, we'll go three by three. So we have one of each side. If it's too busy, we can turn one around. And then these are little gingerbread houses with a plaid and I'll do the same thing. And then let's, let's see where we're at for squares. See how many we can safely fit, fit in here. All right. So usually if I'm doing something like this, I would want one of these as like my, my focus would be up here. And then this one's kind of busier. So this one can go to the side like that. And then I would probably pick one of the green ones, maybe. Let's go with this one. I'm just looking at green. So you got the white and the white, the green. Now I would go with a solid green that we can add embellishments on. And we have the Santa. Now, my issue is, is that these are probably too big to fit four on here because three by four is 12. So I could go and squeeze them together and not have any gap. And at that point, I would put the Santa Claus is coming to town. We would put the green one next to it. And then we would have this one up here. Um, I don't particularly care for that. So what I think I'm going to do is just um, cut off just a sliver of each of these so that they'll fit the four on there, giving it a little bit of a gap. Because like right here, you can tell that this one's not the right height because of the paper pad. So we are going to cut the height down by that much. And I'm just going to use the top one as the template. And it looks like it's an eighth of an inch. So we've taken an eighth of an inch off of all those. Now I don't like how this looks. So I'm going to recut the Santa and try and um, take that eighth of an inch off um, in a different way. These also need that eighth of an inch off. So let me get these real quick. I'm not worried about the width because with the width, there I'm only doing two rows. 
so that really doesn't matter. And part of it's going under the photo. I just want the height to fit in. So let's go ahead and let me find a different, I've got more of those because there's three in a pad, I can put pull out a different one. Actually, there's this one. I wonder how, there's this Christmas magic one. I'm wondering how tall that is. And that's too tall, so I can't trim that down. So let's go back and do the Santa Claus is coming to town. Here's another one. All right. So I'm going to cut this right at his boots. Well, actually, first, let me trim it off. I'm going to cut it apart. And if I can't cut this down to a decent size, then I'll pick something else. All right, let's see. I just don't want the the little border that's going around. There's this little gray border going around and I didn't want that cut off on one end and not on the other three. So this is the difference. I just cut a little of his boots off, but now you still see that frame going around. And that's just personal preference. All right, so again, Kind of move them around. Have these here and this there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let me go ahead. I'm going to start with the outside and then I'll add the pictures and the inside after I have this all down where I like it. And I'm just looking to make sure I have a nice border and difference between the gaps between each of the um, squares. Like right there I like. And it looks pretty straight. And then I go to this end and I do the same thing down here because I want the top and the bottom to be the same. And then I can split the difference with the inside ones. There we go. There's that one, and now we just need this one here. Okay, and then we'll just add these last two. So this one I had up here. And I'm just lining it up next to that one. And then we'll do the one at the bottom, where again, we're going with the green. And this one's just a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna kind of scooch it over a little and play with the gap so it's not as visible. And it's not gonna be 
And again, I don't think anybody's going to go with a ruler or, you know, a T-square ruler and go, oh, that's off a little bit. I think we'll be okay. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm lining him up with that one. And we have now a kind of a grid look to it and all the gaps. And actually, as I'm looking at this, do I want to go and finish it? Hmm. I'd have to take it apart and cut these down. Or I can move it over like I had it before and just go with that. I think we're going to go with this because I don't want to have to pull all those up and redo it. But if you wanted, you could do that as a frame all the way around the whole page. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and insert this. And I'm kind of lining it up here. And then I'll have this one to the side. And there we go. All right, now we can embellish. So I do have the sticker book and I have the um, chipboard and um, the brads and then I also have the puffies. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and stick with this whole collection. So I think the first thing I wanna do is look and see if I have something that I can build down in this corner and you know the more I'm looking at it the more I'm thinking I need to frame it all the way around no I'm not going to do it all right so Let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and take a Christmas tree. And we can put that here. And we have the gingerbread family like up here. So we can go ahead and put that there. And what else do we want? I kind of like the popcorn banners. I think we might do something up there. And I like this made with love Christmas magic. And that's kind of making it my little cluster. And now if I go and I add, like there's a little um, gingerbread house on here and the puppies. I can add that to right here. So it looks like the little family made that. And add a little puffy candy cane maybe. And we have a little lollipop. We can put that in the candy cane guy's hand. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then we can add maybe one of these um, flat back. And we have, let's see. have this gingerbread cookie star. I 
think that and maybe another one down here. Nope. Okay, good with that. Now this one up here just needs a little something. And I'm almost thinking it doesn't like leave these two alone and maybe do something next to it. Let me see. Okay. I have the rolling pin. We have another house. And we have a stack of books. And let's see, that is all like ingredients. And maybe like the stack, the house next to the ingredients. And let's see if we can find a phrase sticker. And this one just says yummy. All right, and then we can just add one of these flat backs. And I think I'll put it to this side because then it brings in the little family. So it kind of goes together. Now we'll do another one here. And then we'll see about a title. So we do have Santa. Or, let's see. Let's get, we have another gingerbread house on a cake stand. So if we add that there. And then there is a plate of cookies for Santa Claus. So again, we did leave some for them. Or, and then we can go and add maybe a title of Homemade with Love. Okay, I like that. And then again, we'll add another um, little gem down here. And that just looks lopsided. So let's see. I'll add this one here. And then maybe we'll add. No, I think we're good. It still is like we have two things going here and then something here. I'm okay. So now we've got that popcorn. And we also have this banner. I'm wondering if I could do two of them across and then do our title below it. find the other one. Here's the other one. Uh, these Echo Parks and Cartabella sticker books, they give you two of each design, so it does come in handy, like, when you're, um, I use them on my December daily, but, like, when you're doing multiple books, or, um, oh, that white didn't come off. Or if you are, um, you know, you like a certain sticker, you're all good because it's going to um, be on multiple. Oops, hang on, I got 
sticker stuck to me. Let me stick this one into this corner. And let's see. We can overlap them just a tad. And it's stuck together too. There we go. So we have that little border going up there. And let's see what we can make for a title. Thinking like Master Builder. Now this is red on red, but it's a bright red. So I'm thinking I'll be okay. I might have to move these over and then I'll add adhesive on it if I move them. just a hair off so we're going to shimmy it over to the left just a little bit And I'm just following the line on the plaid to keep it straight. It's always helpful when you just kind of use your paper. Um, it's kind of your guide to try and follow along. Master Builder. That looks pretty centered. And I think I'll add the year because I think it provided number stickers. Yep. All right, I think that's going to do it. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'll be doing a few more um, for the other kids, but um, yeah, this will be look great in his um, in Dylan's scrapbook. I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you're enjoying this month with all the baby Scott scraps and getting some great inspiration from everybody to use your scraps in your smaller paper pads. And I challenge you to go into your stash, grab one full piece of paper as your background, and use those smaller bits for everything else. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you again on my channel. Bye-bye.